Fangirls, welcome back to Club 30s with MJ Fangirl. I'm super excited today because we have one of our favorite guests, one of the guests that you guys love, and I love when he's here because we always have amazing conversations about the king of pop and the fan community. Welcome back, Randall. Hey, hey, y'all. How y'all doing? <laughs> you know, it's, I, I always love talking to you. You know, and then it doesn't matter if there's like a recording studio or anything in front of us or not. Like, it's all good. So thank you for inviting me into your space once again, as always. Yes. If you guys do not know, Randall is famous, just hot off of Lego Masters. Oh, my Jesus. A (laughs) season. You're you're making me blush. (laughs) I forgot which season. It's the second season two, right? Second season. Yes. Okay, second season. He also was on the holiday episode, so Mm -hmm. the most recent season. If you're listening Mm -hmm. way into the future, you can check those out on Hulu, right? That's right. Yeah, the holiday spectacular is at the end of season four on Hulu, so it's not like a separate thing. People have asked me, like, where is it? Where is it? And I had to discover it myself, so that's where it is. Yeah, so definitely go and check him out there. And he's on Instagram and other socials on the the Rock Files, also on the Lego the Lego Instagram. So go Randall. Oh, man. He's making you, his you're moves. You're embarrassing me. But <laughs> first, I was on your channel before all of that. So this is true. Yes, yes. So all all props to to MJ Fangirl for starting me out. Yes. Well, we've had some great conversations, and today's going to be no different. I thought it'd be really cool for us to get into some information for newer fans or some fans that maybe have been away from the Michael Jackson world for some time and they want to get more into Michael. I know Mm. there's going to be an influx of fans, especially coming up this next spring. Right. 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 The Michael Jackson biopic comes out in April 2025. So you may be listening to this then. You may be listening to this right now. But we are excited because we're going to be telling you guys as new fans what to listen to, what to watch, what to read, what to do first. I'm excited to get into this because um, it's going to pull out some memories of mine that, you know, locked in the back. So I'll be like, oh, yeah, I forgot this thing and that thing. So, yeah, I'm ready to get into it. Yes, let's get into it. But first, I thought it'd be cool for us to just like chat about when we first became a fan. Like, what was the song <laughs> or the moment? And I know yours because you shared it before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, Would you like to share with the class? I could. This is in 2001. So this is I've been watching the MTV Video Music Awards for years. I was 15 in 2001. I was watching it in 97, 98, 99, like back when I think the Dreamcast launched the same day as the one in 99. Like that's how close my world's intertwined because I love video games. NSYNC was performing Pop, that song, This Must Be. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. And I had passing interactions with Michael. I remember seeing the Bucharest 92 concert on HBO, like back in 92. But I didn't really grasp who he was. And my mom played the Dangerous album in the car in 96, 97. But still, no no affinity. When he came out from behind that Etch-A-Sketch, I don't know what happened in the <laughs> air. But, like, the molecules just just aligned in the air. I don't know what it was. But and he and he was popping, locking his butt off. And <laughs> he was. And I remember, and I it remember in fast after that, motion. because the etch sketch said pop, and then it's, it's king of pop. Or they Wait, said no. no, they said this is what it was. This must be we must be kings of pop, and then they shook the s off, and then I was yes. like, oh no, and then they outlined the smooth criminal silhouette, and then the thing rose, and then he came up out of it, and I was like, oh, <laughs> so after that, like I went out. This is when the special editions was out. Right before Invincible Drop, so I bought Bad 2001 Special Edition, Dangerous, Off the Wall. Yes, uh, Special thriller. Editions. Yeah, and after that, I was locked in. I was locked <sighs> in, so I'm glad that I caught the wave. And then I think that directly connects that connects to a moment that you experienced, but I'm not going to get into that. But yes, that's like yes. the moment that I became a fan. 
Amazing. And it's crazy because I was literally getting the chills when you're telling that story because I remember that moment, too, sitting in the living room. I had no clue that Michael was going to mm-hmm. show up. Um, and don't we miss those days when Michael would be able to just show up like randomly at an award show or an event? <sighs> yeah, We're lucky to have experienced it, though. Yes. That's why I said I'm glad I was able to catch it at that time. And yeah. And that was back when monoculture was still a thing, too. Right. Everybody was watching the same thing. So everybody was on it at the time. So that was great. For sure. For sure. I could, I'm going to share my, just a very quick story about when I discovered Michael. I grew up in a household where we listened to Michael. My dad was a big, he still is a big fan of Michael, Stevie Wonder, Teddy Prendergrass. But for some reason, the Jacksons always stood out to me and I knew them. I listened, but really there was a moment when I was in middle school. It was the summer before maybe sixth or seventh grade. And I was watching VH1. And at that time, VH1 always played one thing and one thing only, the Jackson's American Dream, over and over. <laughs> now, they played other things, but it just, it was one of those movies that was like, you turn on VH1, oh shoot, it's on again, let me watch. Mm-hmm. So there was a moment where Michael, of course, like I said, loved the Jacksons, watched mainly for their story, but there was the moment where the adult Michael, played by Wiley Draper, was singing human nature and he was like why like literally with the headphones just like this why (laughs) tell him that it's human and i was like what song is that and i remember asking my dad what song is the song where michael jackson says why over and over and how can i get that song and he like made me a like a burned cd for you guys that might not know wow (laughs) sign of the times yeah back in the day Before we could download music or go to YouTube and look it up, we had to go on. First of all, you could go buy the CD (laughs) or you could go buy the cassette or whatever. But really, like when you wanted to download music, you had to go on something called Napster or LimeWire and download an illegal file (laughs) and put a, (laughs) a blank CD inside of your computer and burn, but really record them all to that CD. So you could do like a mixtape. That was my moment. Human nature was my moment. So, but as you said earlier, you know, when you first started listening or when you first had that moment where you're like, that spark went off, then you went to go and get the special editions and all that. So that's what I think would be cool to, to talk about what albums, what compilations, what Mm -hmm. Jackson five stuff, what should they listen to first? Ooh. So I think you would be more attuned to the Jackson stuff. I'm a, yes. so at, because of my introduction of 2001 and then going back and listening to solo Michael first, my affinity and my pocket of Michael's career is like 1979 and on. Got it. So before that, I'm not as familiar I know some of the albums and some of the songs. Yes. Like I listen to Jackson stuff. That's like the next best thing um, or the most, most familiar thing to me outside of his solo career. So I would love to hear you start with some of the Jackson stuff. Yes, I can start that off. First things first for the Jackson five, I would highly recommend that you look into the Jackson five anthology. The Jackson 5 Anthology, when I got it, it was a double disc, so two CDs. Um, I'm trying to think how many songs it was. It was maybe 30 or 40 songs, but to me, that was the best anthology. It's not like the greatest hits or those collections from Motown. It was the Jackson 5 Anthology. So if you look that up on your Spotify or your Apple Music or whatever, even on YouTube, it'll come up, and I'll insert a picture of it here just so you can get that, but... That CD collection is the best, and it goes from the very beginning, the first four hits, the ABC, I Want You Back, um, The Love You Save, and I'll Be There, all the way down to right before they left Motown and went to Epic Records. So you have songs like I Am Love, and um, I'm trying to think. I Am Love, Life of the Party, that kind of stuff. What, what do you think people should expect listening from listening to the Jackson five anthology in the context of, you know, 
the Jackson's career as a whole and in his solo career later? I think that the most important thing when listening to the Jackson 5 is to listen to the evolution. Like when you hear, first of all, you're hearing somebody truly evolving from you know, from a young child going through puberty, going to into adulthood, manhood, and you're listening to his vocals change, but you'll also hear, you'll also hear the type of songs that he sings change and evolve into some songs with a little bit more depth in the beginning. I feel like the Jackson 5 sang a lot of like, of course, I would say not pop, because it really wasn't pop, but it is kind of like the bubblegum type of like easy songs, you know? But then as you listen through that anthology, you have songs where he gets deeper into emotion. And I feel like the way that he expresses himself through his voice and the different ad libs and all that, it changes. So I would definitely say to look out for that. Cool. Okay. Yeah, no, I, that's something that I need to hop into, to be honest. And then another question for you, because you kept mentioning CDs. When we talk about starter packs, should people just stream or should they actually procure acquire purchase these items what's your opinion on that that's a great question i think that they should definitely procure the real deal the physical (laughs) copies i mean you don't need to have like so the thing is it's a starter pack right so you could stream it you could you very well could but i think there's something to be said about the beauty of listening to an album from start to finish and doing that on your phone is hard. Like there's Mm. always going to be something that comes up, whether that be a phone call, a text, unless you leave your phone on do not disturb like many of us do. But I know a lot of us have lives and sometimes those, the phones just hold everything. You want to have a day set aside where you can listen to some of these albums Put it on while you're cleaning. Put it on while you're getting ready for the morning to go out to work or to school, whatever. That would be my suggestion. Because all this stuff is really cheap to get, too, especially if you go on eBay. Yeah, yeah, especially if it's if it's reissued, then, then yeah. Try to yeah. find the original stuff is a bit harder. But, yes. Yeah. But, if, but if you do decide to do that where you just stream it, put your phone on Do Not Disturb so you could just mm-hmm. you could just zone out. I think the, how I would answer this question, you know, to, to add to the Jackson 5 anthology, what would my picks be for albums? I would pick the Triumph album. I think that is like the best Jackson's album. You can see, again, that continued growth of what you're talking about and how there are some themes of content that you'll see later in Michael's career like really crystallize in the Triumph album because he evolved as a songwriter, composer, arranger, all that. One of the best examples of that is Heartbreak Hotel on the Triumph album, in my opinion. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, So, you know, rewinding two years before that, you got to pick up Off the Wall. You got to pick up Thriller, of course. You got to pick up Bad, Dangerous. You got to pick up the solo albums. Wait, but I have one more Jackson's thing that they have to listen to. The Destiny album. Yes. yes. The Destiny album. Like, that album is just so... You just need it. You've got to listen to the Destiny album. It's got Blame It on the Boogie, Things I Do For You, Shake Your Body Down to the Ground. That's what you get for being polite. Like, Teenage Angst, like, you just... Oh, all the songs that just get bangers. to your heart. Right? And the title track, mm. Destiny. If you haven't watched that or heard that, look that up on YouTube right now. Where's also random facts, like all of their adult titles are like seven letters long <laughs> for what it's worth. Interesting. Yeah. Very I interesting. I did not realize that. Yeah. And I think for unreleased music, oh, man, I'm. A, you should start with Off the Wall. You should start with that as a solo album. What you'll, you can listen to Thriller. And as I was talking about with the adult Jackson albums like destiny and more so triumph you'll start to hear themes from thriller that he carried across albums like he has the rock song of beat it and that dna carries through a lot of his later albums you'll hear the yearning type of song like baby be mine or lady in my life and that's i just can't stop loving you from bad that's 
someone put your hand out through dangerous. Yeah, right. right. Um, And so though you'll hear the DNA of the rest of his career in Thriller, um, if you think about it that way, on all the other albums that I listed too, there are variants that are better than what's on Thriller. There's stuff on Thriller that's better than what comes later, but Thriller is a seminal album, of course, for the history that it made, but also how you can see how he used that formula to formulate the rest of his albums. Yeah, and I love that. That's like, that's the school of Michael Jackson right there, like really going into a deep dive with these albums and looking at the themes and the songs and um, really it could paint a beautiful picture of the entirety of his career, but you have to look at each individual little piece, you know? What was that saying? You got to see the trees to see the forest or something like that? Something like no, that. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. So Thriller is the one off the wall in Thriller. What about one of the later albums? Because we've got to show some I mean, love to. I'm a is bad there... guy. You already okay. know. Like, I'm a bad guy. And we can get into this later in the other parts of the starter pack. Bad, I think, as an era, as a total package, is a great starter pack in and of itself. Because you got the music on the album. You got the videos. You got the tour. You got the style that bad people talk about how it's like it influences how people dress in decades later. Like bad so has true. so much. It's so rich. And it has a short film, Moonwalker, right? Oh, yeah. So we're, yeah. So bad, really, I think if you had to pick one, I would pick bad. To start with as an era. Yes. Okay, and people should know what eras are. Everybody uses it even for the current artists of today, (laughs) like Taylor Swift and Beyonce. (laughs) But you guys, okay, bad era for sure. And that leads me to what we recommend that you guys watch. Okay, so you bring up an amazing point, Randall. The bad era is the, that's the era to start with. That's really where to start. And you mentioned Moonwalker, which is just like such a fan favorite, was not a huge hit when it came out. Don't even know if it made it to theaters. I don't believe it did in the U.S. at least. I don't, I've read so many times, and we can do a deep dive on this at some point too, that Moonwalker just wasn't, I guess, didn't have the, it didn't have the height that it expected it, to, that they expected it to have. But somehow it is a fan favorite. Fans everywhere just love Moonwalker. And so that brings us into what should they watch? What should they watch first? Ooh, wee. And when it comes to things that they should watch, I think there's there are documentaries that are about the albums themselves, but there are also um, collections of short films, like History on Film. If you remember that DVD from back in the day, there's Michael Jackson's Vision. I recommend. I know a lot of people don't like the Vision DVD because they complain about, oh, it's not in 4K doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You need to experience the videos, how they were when they came out, in my opinion, to really appreciate 4K anyway when you get to that point. Vision is amazing. It's every music video, including stuff like Leave Me Alone, which was never anywhere else besides like Moonwalker. So I didn't mind Michael Jackson's Vision. I think it's the most expansive collection of his short films. So if we're talking about stuff we can buy and not just stuff you can just pull up on YouTube, like that's the one I would pick. When it comes to documentaries, I would echo my earlier point and watch Bad 25. It's a song-by-song song analysis of the album and where he was in his career and how it came to be. And you have some talking heads from modern times, current day, that talk about how influential the album in this era was on them. And I think I would also watch what you said earlier, like Jackson's An American Dream. Yes. Yes. My movie gets some love. (laughs) If you guys don't know, I'm like, I love this movie so much. I will just, I'll tell everybody about it, that they need to watch it. A lot of people are like, it's four hours. I ain't got time for that. I'm like, no, you need to make time because it's such a great story. Like, how could you appreciate Michael and where he came from? You have to understand the come up. Yes, Started from the bottom. Now he's here. You know what I mean? Yes. You need to understand it. The Jackson's American Dream, for sure, that would be my pick. But also, 
I wanted to mention making MJ's Thriller as something that people need to watch because yeah. a lot of people know the Thriller music video and all of the 14 minute glory that it is, but a lot of people don't know about the making of. And that was, first of all, not only is it something that's really fun to watch, just like the process of that video being made and the fun behind the scenes and then the seriousness of it all and the choreography and how all of that came to be, the makeup, the transformation, that's, to Mm -hmm. me, that's the best part, to see how Michael transformed not only into the zombie, but also into the werecat. But to me, the best part about making MJ's Thriller is the story behind it and like understanding that this is what funded the music video. Thriller wasn't even supposed to have been made because the Thriller album was already a success. It was the last single. The record company was like, we don't need to do another video. Like, you're good. Like, the album sold well. You're good. And they didn't want to do a video. And Michael was like, really wanted to do it. So he and his lawyer at the time, John Branca, came up with a plan to work with a video distribution company. And I believe it was either Showtime or HBO. And basically, they did this behind the scenes to, um, they sold it and distributed it in order to get the money for, to make the video. Watch it in that context, and I think you will Mm -hmm. really appreciate it. Because that's, I think that's the first time that something like that had ever even been done. Like That's why I'm shaking my head, just because it's so, you take it for granted nowadays. Like, people like to see the process and almost expect to see how things happen, you think about Beyonce's Homecoming on Netflix, right? Like, mm-hmm. that is directly connected to the making of Thriller and the barriers that engagement, that creation broke for people back in the day. Yeah, it's just, Michael was just such a pioneer in so many ways. So, yeah, it's definitely, like, really cool to look back with all that in co- context of the time in which all mm-hmm. that happened. So you could fully understand, like you said, because we definitely take it for granted. Even mm-hmm. us as like people, and we grew up in the 90s, right? We're both late 80s babies. Yes. And so I think even us, sorry, I just, <laughs> I had to laugh because I just started to realize, wow, we're getting up there. But it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're giving y'all the knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. Do the knowledge. <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, I'm still 25, but that doesn't really compute because we're about to go into 2025. Anyway, going back towards our list of what you guys should watch. Um, one more thing I want to mention, and then we can go on to tours, which is a big part of the Michael Jackson story, right? Last mm-hmm. thing, you got to watch the Legend Continues documentary. Have you watched yes. The Legend Continues? You have, right? I'm, sh- I'm sure I have. I'm sure I have. It's narrated by James Earl Jones. And it came out, I believe it was in the early 90s or it might be 89 or something. It chronicles his life from Motown, from the audition all the way to basically like the bad tour. It's amazing just the way it was a television special. I believe it was out on CBS or something like that in the late 80s. And... I love the way it tells the story of Michael and his family and his career growth and all the way up to the bad tour. And it includes some testimonials from fans. Elizabeth Taylor is on there. Sophia Loren is on there. They've got some clips from Barry Gordy, I believe. Smokey Robinson, I believe. So it's just a really cool, it's dated. When you watch it, you'll be like, oh, okay, this is old school, but that's it's what a time you need capsule. to watch. Yeah. That's the best way to put it, Randall. It's a time capsule. So definitely check that out. And by the way, all these will be in the show notes in the bottom of whatever, however you're consuming this, whether it be on YouTube or on the podcast. So we got to get into the meat and potatoes of it all. The tours, the shows. It's only one tour. It's only one tour that we need to put on the starter pack. It's only one tour. (sighs) And you know what I'm going to say. Let's hear this. It's only one tour. Let's hear and this. You said it, and you said it in the Legend Continue section. You know the answer. And for those of y'all uh, that don't know the answer because you're listening, because you need to know what's in your starter pack, the answer to this question is the bad tour. And I'm going to tell you why. Tour. The bad tour. This is Michael finally solo from the brothers. 
So he's able to use the DNA from those earlier tours and things that people expected to see from him, but also add some of the new flavor that you'll see in his later tours. The Bad Tour is a great time capsule of all those things and allows you to say, I've never heard that song before. Where is that from? Oh, I didn't know Things I Do For You was from this Jackson album. I didn't know. I thought Heartbreak Hotel was a solo joint. Oh, I didn't know this was on this. So it's great. It's great. And he's singing live. He dancing. It's wonderful. Bad tour all the way. Yes, you are so right. It's literally, it's a textbook. If you, like, that is something that'll introduce you to so much more. I don't even know it, like, it opens you up to so much about Michael's career and, Like you said, it's got the live vocals. He's really at the height of his Mm -hmm. career, really, when you talk about the bad air and the bad tour. And everybody loves the bad tour. If you don't, if you watch the bad tour in this starter pack and you're like, eh, I don't know what to tell you. I think that is, (laughs) he's at his zenith. Like the arrangements change from show to show. You can find these on YouTube. Yokohama is the one I would recommend the most. That's the one that's the most complete that really made its way through the forum days. Back in the fandom, so this is 2000, 2001, 2004 time that I'm talking about. Yokohama Bad Tour, start there. Yes, the Bad Tour. Start there, but then put a cherry on top and check out the Dangerous (laughs) Tour. All right, I'm sorry. I'm Team Dangerous. I love the Dangerous Tour. You have to watch. Yes. Dangerous Live in Bucharest. Unfortunately for unfortunately for us now, we don't have the the um the very original. Okay, so long story short, Dangerous Live in Bucharest was an HBO special. It was a an amazing like one night event that streamed live on HBO on cable television. Now they actually have come out with a DVD of it. So I believe that I've heard that the DVD is not like that full exact Dangerous in Bucharest show. I don't even know the, if the original HBO one was, to be honest, because I was like five years old when I watched had, it. It has some shots from other shows in it. Um, you should be able to find the full Bucharest show, the original one, or parts of it on YouTube. You can see the differences the most clear in the opening number of Jam, where there are some shots that are pulled um, that are not in the Bucharest DVD um, that, of course, they they needed to spruce up for HBO. Yes, I would recommend. Okay, so I would recommend that you watch both. I mean, I know that's like a lot. Start with like the DVD if you want, or start with whatever is on the original, the um, the official Michael Jackson channel. But then go back and watch um, the original, like the full show that's also on YouTube. Like Randall said, I just think it's cool to see because people don't realize Michael had such a hand in kind of also um, curating what he wanted people to see and what like what shots were important to him like what movements were important to him to show so you can kind of see like what is important for him um in terms of like kind of creating that story around the tour and the show himself by looking at the uh, one that I, they actually I will did say, i know you seem dangerous i think as as these eras stack upon each other dangerous was like the crystallization of his his legend on the 80s um, even if you think about the toaster, like that is like, all right, I'm the king of the eighties. Y'all know I am. Even the way his entrance is, it's like, all right, this is how I'm presenting to you in a new way, but I'm standing on the legend of the bad tour and all of the other tours before that. So yes. <laughs> Randall, you always got to give that extra love to the bad tour. But I know everybody listening probably is on your side because that's just the fan. Everybody loves it. It's um, but no, you're so right. And and for people that don't know, because you might be new, like we said, this is for you. The toaster is when Michael. Well, 
he pops out of the stage and he stands there for a very long time. And you've probably seen these online where people talk about how Michael Jackson stands there <laughs> and people faint and like freak out for a whole five minutes. Yeah. It wasn't five minutes. It was a long time, though. It was a long time. <laughs> uh, but definitely check that out. Um, and now we can get into some other TV specials, interviews, performances, like other special moments in Michael Jackson history um, that would be important Ooh, to um, watch. And we've done re reaction videos to a lot of these. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have. Go. Can I go? Can I share? Okay. So first of all, that's a, that's a great point. If you want to watch some of this stuff with, with fans, with us, with literally myself and Randall, definitely go to the YouTube channel MJ Fangirl TV and check out the reactions playlist because Randall and I have reacted to the entire Yokohama Bad Tour show, uh, the entire dangerous. Um, it wasn't the Bucharest show; it was another one Oslo, where he performed maybe? in daylight. Um, it, oh yeah, it might have been Oslo. Mm -hmm. It was light outside, so that was cool because he was performing with sunshine, like. It was just, yeah. Anyway, and we've also reacted to um, our biggest, the biggest video on the channel to date is the reaction to Motown 25 versus um, mm -hmm. 2001. We reacted to Billie Jean um, because Billie Jean Motown 25 is what you need to watch to understand what the world saw when Michael Jackson went from the Jackson 5, Michael Jackson from the Jackson 5 to Michael Jackson, the king of pop, like beginnings of that so that's what you need to watch for sure motown 25 billy jean actually watch the whole performance because you can find that on youtube just look up um jackson's and michael jackson motown 25 and you'll see um that entire performance amazing um i'm also gonna throw in since i'm since i'm already talking i'm gonna also throw in the 30th anniversary because i know that a lot of people are like what they're not sure about it but that was a concert that was celebrating michael's um mm -hmm. 30 years as a solo artist on the charts and if you watch um the jackson's part that to me is is amazing to see that was i think the yeah. last time that they performed all together all six of the brothers so you need to watch that solo part is you can watch that later after you've completed everything else we've listed out for you, but definitely watch that Jackson's yes. section. Um, I think it's um, worth a watch, man. When it comes to TV specials, interviews and performances, I have to, I have to double back and special shout out the jam performance on the dangerous tour in Wembley, 1992. Go look that up. Like, that's the best performance of Jam, in my opinion. Um, I would pick the MTV Video Music Awards performance from 1995. Um, yeah. Shout out yes. to Travis Payne. Shout out to Travis Payne. Yes. Choreographer. Like, I would pick Mastermind. that for sure. Um, because this is, uh, you know, at the point of history being released – and this is probably one of his best performances of Dangerous. That's one of his favorite songs and which evolved in performance throughout the years. So that's a good entry point to uh, see that and then inquire about other versions of Dangerous Live. Um, I just like when it comes to like the TV moments, Michael was very um, particular in in how he showed up and where he showed out one thing that i think is great to see when we talk when we lionize and we we mythologize michael jackson and his prowess of performing on stage one thing that's interesting to see soul train 1993 performing remember the time when he's in the chair yes <laughs> yes that's such a great moment and it's iconic for yeah, it's iconic because he's 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 sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you he for had, mentioning that. Like a spider that. bite or something, so he couldn't like you know get up and dance. But you know the crowd still showed him love anyway. So um, I think right. I just think that's a good texture to see. You know, as we talk about the bad tour and the dangerous tour and how dope these tours are and how he's dancing and moving on stage. Like, look at how he controls the crowd sitting down. 
Yeah, that is so true. And it's funny because I've seen people um, compare like other people's live performances to his sitting down and them being like, Michael Jackson is so amazing as a live performer that he commands the crowd even when he's just sitting down <laughs> in a chair the entire time. But you have to watch because he gets up for like yes, he does. <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I'm laughing because I'm thinking of the moment in my mind right now. He like gets up. All right. Anyway, on to what to read. Um, and this is going to be our last segment of the starter pack. But you guys, if you want any of the information, it's all going to be in the show notes. And all of the actual tangible items that you can purchase are going to be in the Amazon store, the MJ Fangirl Amazon store, which I'll also link in the show notes. So last great books to read. Any call yes. outs for that? So Joe Vogel has a really good book, Man in the Music. Um, it's a it's really a song by song review of mostly his solo stuff. Um, I think there are some Jackson Five and Jackson stuff in there um, or mentioned in there. Uh, but he just talks th- about like, you know, a lot about how these songs came to be. Any like uh, behind the scenes information that would be uh useful for you to know in the context of, you know, his life and career. Um, and another book that I really enjoyed is uh, Remember the Time. This is from two of his bodyguards um, during the later years of his life. And I think while Man in the Music is a very, like, uh, objective, by-the-numbers book, um Remember the time is an, another perspective of Michael through somebody else that is reputable, I would say. Mm-hmm. So, and you get to know Michael in a different way outside of what he presented to us. So, you know, some of those books, the mileage may vary, but I found Remember the Time to be one of the better ones from people that were in his world and in his life and could speak about him uh, honestly, but with empathy as well. Yeah. And I love that um, because it, it humanizes him. Right. I think a lot of the other the books, they talk about him as kind of like this, this, this mm-hmm. figure, this untouchable caricature. And that book really talks about the human side. So great picks. Um, I want to just add to that by saying, I'm a huge fan of Michael Jackson, the businessman, and the guy that was in charge of um, owning a lot of his own stuff and making it possible for other artists in the future to own the rights to their own music. A a lot of the things that he did, um, artists before him that he admired and loved, um, like... uh, I'm trying to Jackie think of the Wilson, name. Jackie Wilson, James it? Brown, Little Richard. Yes, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Um, a lot of those artists that are beloved just did, you know, didn't own their stuff, own the rights to their music, and they didn't really um, know the business of it all. And so he learned from that, learned from the greats and mm-hmm. be greater. Was That's that what exactly he said? That's exactly right. Study and the become greats. become greater. And be greater. Uh and become greater. And so that's what he did. Um, but I definitely would recommend the book called Michael Jackson, Inc. The Rise, Fall and Rebirth of a Billion Dollar Empire. It's by Zach O'Malley Greenberg. And that is um, a book that talks about not only um, kind of the restructuring of the Michael Jackson estate and how it became to now after he passed away to, I guess to be in debt to now have making all this money. And it is right now, like I think one of the estates that makes the most money each year, if not the most, yes. um, but right. But it also talks about how he went from the, for example, it talks about from going from Motown to Epic records and how they had different royalties mm-hmm. now moving from Motown and then how he, was a negotiator and negotiated to get certain things and the masters and the rights to certain things. And I just, I love reading about how Michael was a businessman also talks about the making of thriller and how they, um, use that to get the funding for the video. And yeah, all of it I think is really cool. Cause again, like Randall said, one of the books he mentioned kind of humanizes Michael talks about him as a person and 
um, this talks about him as a businessman and the business of the Michael Jackson brand. So if you're into business, it's yes. a cool book. Great pick. All right. So before we get into the next segment, we have to mention and talk to you guys out there. Are you a Michael Jackson fan that loves to chat about your favorite songs, dissect interviews and travel to events, but you're tired of doing it alone? Well, Club 30s is where we uncover the greatest moments in Michael Jackson's career and chat all things King of Pop. Join our community at Club 30s on Patreon for weekly polls, exclusive content and live streams, as well as access to our private group chat where you can interact with fellow Michael Jackson fans just like us but in real time. And the best part, it helps to support our show so we can continue to create amazing content about the greatest entertainer of all time. Visit patreon.com slash mjfangirl and we will see you in the group chat. All right, so now the segment we're going to get into is a pretty rapid fire this or that moment. We're going to be um, bringing up two different um, moments in Michael's career or elements or Two different things, and we're going to do this or that and quickly explain why we prefer one over the oh, other. Oh, uh, let's get into it. I'm about so, to blow some heads open with this Are you ready, one. Randall? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this or that. <laughs> oh. Jackson's so, or Jackson 5 discography. Oh, gosh. This is hard. Okay, my mind is being blown with this instead. Um... I am going to pick. <laughs> I got to pick. I got to pick Jackson's by like a hair. A hair, a hair, a hair. Because it just oh. got a little bit more of that snap that I like to hear in in Michael's solo career. I think the Jackson 5 stuff is well-rounded. It's probably, it might be, you know, music that people like more. But I like the Jackson stuff by a hair today. Ask me this question tomorrow, and we'll see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go opposite of you. you. You know I'm a Jackson 5 head. Like, I love all the Motown stuff. <laughs> I just can't. I just, I mean, I love the Jackson stuff, too. Don't get me wrong. But, like, there are songs on the Jackson 5 that I just will never give up. Like, you got Dancing Machine. You got Maybe Tomorrow. You're not wrong. You got I'll Be There. Who's You're Loving You? I mean, I mean, it's old. And it's some of it's dated, right? Some of it's, like, just covers of other songs that people have done um, previously. But, like, it's all, it's all really Man, um, great to I listen to. And I love it. <laughs> so that's my choice. I don't. Okay. Well, here's the next one. Ooh, Why you, you want to trip on time. me or they don't care about us? Okay. For me, I'm going to pick they don't care about us. Just because, number one, it's such a powerful song. This song actually became like a song of so many movements in the last couple of years. I feel that it deserves that recognition. Also... I love the fact that there were like the two music videos um, very showcasing um, adversity and injustice in two different parts of the world. And it just shows actually, no, not even two different parts all over the world because the prison yes. version um, of they don't care about us was showing injustice everywhere. And then um, the, mm -hmm. the Brazil version um, he focused on. Yeah, Brazil, because that's where they filmed it. But wow. I love it. I think it just is such a powerful message. And Why You Want to Trip on Me is a throwaway wow. for me. It's like that's my least favorite song on Dangerous. That's a con ooh. confession. Conf ooh. A confession. Got, ooh, we need to do These confessions, are my on, confessions. This, on this pod sometimes. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> Woo. Um, I would. Oh. I would. I would agree I'm taking notes. with your choice of they don't care about us. However, um, I'm a new Jack Swing head. And so they, uh, why you want to trip on me? I didn't didn't wasn't my favorite as I got close to the Dangerous album. But over time, I really like especially there's a there's an extended version of the song on YouTube somewhere that has some like uh that that kind of elevates his background vocals 
in, in the chord progression and all that. So I really like that. But I think they don't care about us mm. and the message and the delivery and and all of that that surrounds that song. I think it's undeniable for sure. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get into this last part. And I think we touched upon this earlier, um, but the last this or that is going to be listening to digital music or physical, whether that be CD, I'm about to record, say you got eight tracks or vinyl. I, I ain't got or no eight tracks. Track. I don't even know if there's any Jackson's <laughs> five's eight tracks. <laughs> I sure don't. That's beyond. That's that's, that's above right. our heads and before our time. Um, We'd have to talk to like I our parents' generation. In this, maybe? In this time we know. live in today where everything is so accessible. I think there's value in uh, procuring physical copies of things um, for a couple different reasons. One, um, the sound quality can be better, whether it's CD or vinyl as opposed to digital, um, because the way some songs are uploaded, their quality can be chopped, whether it's Spotify or Apple Music. I think Tidal has the best um, quality of music streaming wise. But the other reason why I choose physical is because sometimes if you get an album or a single, it has like a remix on it or an extra song that's not on the album. I think about a lot of singles from the dangerous era that have like off the wall remixes or like something from thriller, you know, like a, a single edit from thriller. So um, there's value in finding the physical stuff to add to your collection. Yes, and I totally agree with you. I'm also going to go with physical. And just to add to that, I think about um, the bad album, and I just can't stop loving you. That intro mm-hmm. where he's like, "You look so you beautiful look tonight." So sweet. Yes. <laughs> Whatever that intro, I forgot what it's called. But it's That's literally they don't know me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people <laughs> misunderstand me. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we could we could probably See, recite no, that I, whole I thing, and it's really, crazy because I, really I don't even know the last time much. I listened to I, that. How about you, Randall? Has it been but, years? You know, probably. You listen to it a few times, and you just uh, becomes a part of you, another part of you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're taking over. All right. Anyway. Okay. Our exactly our, right. our inner MJ geek is showing, but this is a safe space. This is Club 30s, baby. This is what it's all about. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, let's get into the next subject. Um, this, this last segment today is going to be a brand new segment that we are introducing <laughs> called Dear Fangirl and Randall. <laughs> no, that was that was eight out of ten. You got to do that every time. What you didn't you didn't like my song? <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> Instead of pre-recording a drop for that, I'm just gonna sing it every time, you guys. See, so you can see the progression whether it gets better or not. Um, <laughs> dear fangirl is gonna be a segment where you write in any advice, questions, things that are going on in your life that are related to being a Michael Jackson fan. Or things that are going on in the Michael Jackson fan community that you want us to help you out with or address. We're going to do it here in this segment. You can submit your questions um, and you will answer. So here's the first question. Or here's actually today's question because we're only going to do one today because um, just being conscious of time here. This question comes from Harsh Terrain. Have you ever met a Michael Jackson fan who doesn't have your best interest at heart? And what did you do to get rid of them? I'm about to say, that's a harsh question. Um, You go first. I have something for this. Okay. So I will just tell a quick story. I grew up on Michael Jackson forums. That was my thing. That's how I met a lot of my fan friends. And even today, like in the Michael Jackson AOL chat room, Michael Jackson forums, I just loved connecting with people um, that were Michael Jackson fans. Um, But I quickly learned once I started actually hanging out with some of these people in real life, because I'm from New York City. So a lot of the fans that I was that I was meeting or chatting with or whatever happened to be from New York or New Jersey, that could that like that area. 
hung out with a couple fans. There's this one girl that I was a really close friends with. We started hanging out and I realized that like she wanted me to be not only like a fan or follower of Michael Jackson, but she wanted me to like to be a follower of her, you know, everything she wanted to do. She wanted, you know, me to everything she wanted to do. She wanted me to follow or be interested in, or like, you know, we might have an argument. Okay. Like I really love, um, you know, this song, or I really love dancing machine. She'd be like, no, but you need to listen to like come together from the history album. Like you don't appreciate good art, you know, just very like, very set in her ways and not open to open discussion and I realized at that moment okay I love Michael Jackson you love Michael Jackson but we don't really mesh here because we can love separate things like Randall and I love a lot of different separate things having to do with Michael Jackson right he's a bad (laughs) tour person I'm a dangerous tour person he loves beat it <clears throat> Me, not so much. But I <laughs> I still feel like we can have a friendship and not have, um, you know, an argument about what's better or not and, like, take that to heart. So for me, I just feel like when you're a Michael Jackson fan and you become friends with other Michael Jackson fans, yes, you come for the Michael Jackson aspect, but there has to be something else that makes you stay. You know what I mean? Like, you have to have other things um, – whether personality wise or whatever to mesh because you're not going to always talk about Michael Jackson every day. And then when you do disagree, yeah. you don't want that to be I echo that. the thing that makes I a friendship fall apart. I have a con like I, I've had conversations with other MJ fans and we always say like, there's gotta be something else to you. Um, which I think makes for more well-rounded conversations about Michael uh, as well. Right? Like you bring your life experience and all the other things you're interested in and you see him through that prism. <laughs> Right, exactly. And I think that it's hard, especially when, you know, if you're new to the fandom or whatever, and you're meeting lots of people and you're vibing, whatever, you may think like, okay, this is going to be like my MJ bestie or whatever, but you have to give it time and just feel the friendship out and see what other things you have in common. I mean, there are times, um, like even Randall knows, like I just recently took a break from YouTube and the podcast and everything And I took like a Michael Jackson break. Like I just, I was so burnt out from like every week doing like, you know, doing the stuff for YouTube and whatever that I kind of lost my interest for a moment in Michael just because I was just consuming so much of his, of his stuff. And sometimes you need to step back and just take that time away. If your friendship is only based on Michael Jackson, Mm -hmm. then you're Mm -hmm. not going to have a friendship for those few months. Like, you can't talk about anything else. Like, that's just, it's not a good basis to have. I think it's its a cool thing to, to have, though, the that in common. Yes. Because a lot of us do have similar interests otherwise, you know? A lot of us like some old school stuff. Right. Or we might, I don't know. I don't know. We might like the same movies or have similar upbringings. So I would recommend, um, if they don't have your interests at heart, Think about them as a person and then think about them as a fan second. There's always Michael right. Jackson fans out there. There's right. a new person listening to this new Starter Pack episode right now. <laughs> come to Club 30s. Um, I don't have. Come to the group chat. I don't think I have a, a story. <laughs> I think the reason why is because of the advice you just gave about, you know, sussing people out as people first um, before you get intertwined with them um through the michael jackson lens so there's nobody that i've been in the process of getting closer to that has done me wrong um i just i just i keep my i keep my distance from people that i think might do something like that so i avoid that um and i think that's a life lesson in any way right like outside of the mj sphere of you know if you see people and how they treat others um and you don't want to be near that just just don't just don't so luckily i haven't had to uh go through anything like that my (laughs) my mj adventure has been largely unscathed by bad relationships so far i love that i love that 
Cool. I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad that um, you haven't had those experiences. I'm glad that. Um, I wonder if that came from like a harsh terrain experience they're having, issue. like currently. You know, yeah. If there's somebody in their life that's like treating them bad, you know, tell them right. to leave you alone. Yeah. <laughs> just stop dogging me around okay (laughs) if you would like to submit a question for dear mj or dear fangirl segment um check the show notes down below it'll either be in the youtube description box or in the show notes down below or you can visit my website for information on how to submit that feel free to submit a whole scenario you guys we're here to help and um we can't wait to listen to and uh, interact with yeah, your next questions. You know, Randall, yes, this was such a I, fun episode. I, this was good. I had you know, a blast. Stuff out of my bag, the starter pack, the question, the, the this or that, bruh. That, that, that wore me out. If we got, who, I can't wait for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now, you guys got to make sure that you are subscribed. You can consume this podcast in two different ways. It's going to be on the MJ Fangirl TV YouTube channel as well as on Spotify on Club 30s with MJ Fangirl. And Randall, we hope, will be a frequent guest because we love the conversation with Randall. I, I love having conversations with you just because I feel like mm-hmm. I feel like we just – we just have been doing this for so long from the reaction videos from my small studio apartment in New York to being here in California, doing lots of events and MJ things together. So I think um, I just I really appreciate you coming on here and um, sharing your expertise. I appreciate you having your me knowledge every time. I don't take it for and granted. And your opinions so, with all uh, of us thank here. Thank you for inviting me to the channel where y'all should hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell, too. Yes. Um, Randall, have you subscribed to the channel? You should hit that subscribe button. <laughs> hit that notification bell. You guys, it's been <laughs> five years and Randall is still not subscribed. Hopefully he'll at least follow the podcast on Spotify. Do you even have? I mean, I- I'm subscribed. Oh, you just don't have the bell. Wrong. I'm subscribed. <laughs> And I also like the video, so you should like the video and subscribe to the video. Yes. And hit that notification And hit that bell. notification bell because Randall is one person that has not done it. And so he doesn't even know <laughs> when the videos go up. If you want to know when these videos go live, including the next this or that segment, make sure that you subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Follow the Rock Files. Follow Randall. Follow the Rock Files. Yes, I am out Everywhere. there at the Rock Files. No K. Um, and they can find you at MJ Fangirl. MJ Fangirl blog um, on mm. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and then MJ Fangirl TV on YouTube. MJ Fangirl, if you look up MJ Fangirl on Spotify, you'll find us. The name of the podcast is Club 30s with MJ Fangirl. And yeah. Yes, until next time, we will talk to you guys later. Bye.